Hi everyone and welcome once again. Looks like we've got another white theme going on today, particularly with regard to three stage white finishes. Now in an earlier video, I showed you the application and repair process when I repaired a Volvo. In that film, we covered color sample preparation as well as the application and blending on a smaller area. Now that prompted an awful lot of questions from you guys. And again, thank you very much for your feedback. But you wanted to know what about a larger area? How do we manage on that with particular thoughts around mottling control? I'm going to use this Toyota shell to show you the process over a larger area. All of my prep work has been done. I've used a white undercoat product because, as I told you before in that earlier video, that will help me achieve hiding in fewer coats of base coat colour, saving time and money and reducing problems. Everything's ready to go. All I need to do now you know what I'm going to say, is get the car in the oven, give it a final clean, a tack rag, and then I'm ready to go with you through this step by step. Start at the bottom of the rear wheel arch where it meets the door and apply a closed but wet or not over heavy coat to the first section. Apply immediately a second lighter coat at an increased distance, finishing inside of the first coat. Move down the side and repeat the process connecting this part to the previously applied section to complete application. Product adjustment is even more important when the job is as large as this and basically I've got two overlap zones to consider so using a slower adjustment is the sensible thing to do. When planning your job Try to do it in a way that minimises the amount of overlap zones so as to reduce the possibility of dry spray forming on the unpainted part of the job. Today it's 20 degrees C and 20% relative humidity in the cabin. So not only am I going to go slow in my adjustment, I'm also going to add 5% demineralised water to ease the application a little. Remember, activating or hardening the base coat will actually make it faster and that's why we need to go slower. Changing to a larger spray gun setup is something I would consider doing in warmer, drier climates. One of the difficulties with this job here is that I am actually spraying white on white, so in effect I am spraying blind. Take your time to check that you have closed the film on the complete area of the repair. Mistakes here can prove costly later on with an uneven appearance in the repair when it's finished. Okay, that wasn't too difficult, thanks to the right product adjustment, I've got to say. But what you should see now down the side of a car is the complete, uniform, closed, wet film. No openness, no dry spots, no coarse texture. Therefore, nothing to give us a problem before we go on to the next stage. I'm going to dry this now, as per the TDS, before we come back. One thing that I would add here, though, I'm sometimes asked, what happens if I get dirt in the ground coat or I get a bit of a problem well after drying and cooling you can again just spot that in very gently if you need to again though using activated or hardened base coat that's the ground coat dried and I've allowed a little extra time for it to cool down as well now just like with the ground coat the product adjustment for the effect coat is going to be slower here when we were talking about the ground coat it was to counteract the drier behavior there because we were adding activator or hardener into the base coat. With the effect coat, of course, although we've got this activated layer underneath, which is really laid down very nicely now, I am still gonna get a little bit of natural absorption of the next layers I apply on top, but I've also got to remember that the car will be slightly warmer. So it's always a good idea to go slower. And remember, in the most severe cases, you can add five to 10% demineralized water into your effect coat to ease the application a little, and here, today, I'm going to use 5% water on top. As with the ground coat, I am again applying from the bottom of the rear wheel arch where it meets the door. This process is just the same as applying a normal effect colour in 1.5 coats, apart from the fact that this is a translucent colour rather than a highly pigmented one. The focus here is keeping the effect coat inside of the first closed coat. 
Move down the side when you have completed the first section, ensuring that you merge each section together to give a continuous film. If further coats are needed for colour reproduction, these must be applied wet on wet using a staggered layering technique. In the most severe climate conditions, consider your spray gun. Normally I would use a 1.2, but for the reasons I've just described, it is worth considering a 1.3 in the most severe conditions at this stage, particularly if it's hot, as this will help maintain application speed and achieve a continual wet film. Okay, so that's the effect coat applied. And as you can see, with a little bit of forward thinking, a little bit of planning about how to approach the job, and remember the right product adjustment, it's not too difficult to do, even allowing for the fact that it's a large area and the car itself is slightly warm. So I'm often asked now at this point, what happens if I get dirt or dust in my base coat, in my effect coat, what can I do? The simple answer is wash this layer off you're not going to damage the layer underneath because that is activated and it's dry. Okay, so you've always got that opportunity. It's time now that I flash this off to get ready for clear. Now I have some choices. If you're lucky enough and you have, like we have here, an in-booth blowing system, that will be set somewhere between 35 up to say 40 degrees C. I can use that. I can use Venturi's on a stand or I can use handheld Venturi's because this is not activated. If I'm going to use a handheld Venturi, I would also recommend to increase the temperature slightly so that it draws any remaining moisture and co-solvent out of the base coat and that way it's not going to impact our clear coat film at all. So let me get on with that and I'll see you again afterwards for the clear coat. So here we are after flash and this is looking really good so far. All I've got to do now is apply my favourite clear coat to finish the job. And if you're interested in which one I'm going to use, take a look on screen now. So that's the drying done and here's the finished job and as you can see it's looking pretty good and I've got to say I'm pleased with that. So that's how to go about repairing three stage on a larger area. Now if you combine the information and tips that I've given you here with that that I gave you in our previous example where we did colour sample preparation and we did then the blending technique on the Volvo, you have pretty much everything you need to confidently go forward and repair these three stage finishes. Now it's up to you to put it into practice. Good luck. <laughs>